Hi, my name is Walton Burns. I am the senior editor at Alphabet Publishing, and I'm also a published uh, writer and freelance writer and editor. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things you can do or avoid doing while you are preparing your manuscript uh, to send it to a publisher or an editor um, that will make the editor's life that much easier and eventually the designer's life um, easier uh, down the road. Um, and while everybody has their own little quirks and likes and dislikes, these are some pretty general rules that will serve you well, I think, for most situations. Um, first of all, it's just really helpful to try to be as consistent as possible in your manuscript. Um, and um, there's a couple of places where um, inconsistency can creep in. So we'll talk about some of those, but just in general, keeping in, in mind that being consistent is always a good thing. Um, so one thing that can happen, um, particularly in the area of textbooks, is um, people forget to format their headings and subheadings consistently. Um, so here, the first unit, unit one, has a nice even um, formatting, and we can see all the subsections, but unit two is all over the place. So let's apply some styles. For the unit uh, headings, we could use heading one style in your word processor. Sometimes it's called H1. Um, and how about for the sections underneath there, we're going to use the heading two style. Um, and you can keep going if you have sub sections, you could do H3. Um, you don't want to go too far down, but using those styles to give a hierarchy that's clear to your document just makes it so much easier to see what the organization is to navigate and jump around. Um, if I want to make edits to the same section in different parts of the document, um, and so on. Um, so we've solved the style problem here. The organization is clear, but there's also a wording problem still going on. Um, and when I see things like this, um, I think well, in one place you've called the vocabulary section vocabulary, and another place you've called it words. I don't know which one you like better. Um, and the same thing with discussion questions and discuss it. Which one do you like better? Or maybe discuss it is supposed to be a direction and you accidentally turned it into a heading. I don't know. Um, and then um, the pre-reading questions is capitalized in one place and not capitalized somewhere else. That's the kind of thing that the designer is going to um, change later on or is going to happen, but it's good to just be consistent. So let's just clean that all up. And now it's much clearer. I can see what's repeating, what doesn't. Um, and um, it's just a lot easier document to work with and navigate through. And it's going to be much easier for the designer to see your vision. Another area uh, to look for consistency is in the text itself. Um, are you going to use American spellings or British spellings? Um, American idioms and grammar or British uh, idioms and grammar? Um, are you always um, using, um, if you hyphenate a word in one place, are you hyphenating it throughout? Um, things like that. Is your style consistent? Um, and uh, even formatting of um, different pieces of the text. When you give an example, um, do you bold the word example and then the actual example is normal? Do you italicize the whole thing? Um, are you centering all your readings or are you left or right formatting all of them? Um, just making sure all of that is clear so that again the parallelism is clear um, in the text because that makes it easier for the the user to understand it. And even things like um, if you have a book full of readings and you have 30 or 40 readings and then you've decided to highlight some vocabulary words, 
Um, try to remember, are you bolding your vocabulary words or are you italicizing them, bold and italics, um, coloring them? What exactly are you doing? It's helpful to be consistent um, because the final text has to be, so the teacher and student know what's going on. And if you do it in your manuscript, it's just a lot easier to go through and find and even change if we want to change it down the road. Um, so looking for consistency in the text itself and your style is extremely helpful. And finally, um, it's good to be consistent um, in your directions. Um, if you have a number of places where you ask students to um, find a vocabulary word in the text and use it in a sentence, make sure you're always phrasing that direction the same way. Um, if every uh, question in your, uh, every unit um, ends with a um, discussion question um, and you want students to discuss with a partner, make sure you're wording that the same way. Um, I've seen books that have uh, 36 different chapters and every time the question was worded differently. Um, that's very confusing for the teacher and the student. Um, and it makes it very hard for the editor to know how did you want this direction line to be phrased? Um, have you even thought about it? Um, it's a good thing to think about exactly what wording you want. Um, and it's also if we do have to make a change, um, let's say there's a typo um, or we decide to say work with a partner or in a small group, um, it's much easier to find and change if everything is always worded the same. So we're going to pick work partner, ask each other the question below, then discuss. Brilliant. Much easier for everybody uh, to have it looking all the same. Another area to think about is formatting um, and uh, making sure that you're not adding too many uh, formatting details to the manuscript. Um, it's a bit of a balancing act because it's definitely good to know um, how you want the uh, book organized, what are the main headings and the subheadings. Again, if you're bolding vocabulary words, um, if you want numbered lists in particular places, you have particular formatting ideas of how things should be laid out on the page. Um, but also remember that um, editors and graphic designers um, often have knowledge about what is going to be clear um, and work and so they may want to change things. Um, it's a negotiation, but they may have some good ideas that are going to be different from your ideas. Um, and it's much easier to add formatting than it is to um, undo formatting and then add new formatting. Um, and there are some things such as tables and graphs um, and pictures uh, that are often handled very differently by the book design software than a word. So, you know, it's a balancing act, but a good rule of thumb is to use just minimal formatting in your book. Um, one area that's really easy to keep it simple is fonts. Um, try not to use too many different fonts. Try to use two fonts, maybe one font through the whole thing. Um, again, use those styles. Mark things heading one, heading two, body, uh, those styles are your friend, um, but keep it simple because we have to just undo it um, if you get into too many fonts. Um, the designers have other, you know, have good ideas about how to make things look nice and clear on the page, and they have access to way more fonts than you and I. So let's just simplify this. Um, okay, I've made the headers and the directions one font, and I made the body and text and student. The, nor the text and the student answers different font and i've done a little bolding and a little playing with the sizes so you can kind of see the organization that's fine but let's say you really do want things to look a particular way how can you indicate that without using lots of fonts and indentation and all that stuff um one way is comments leave comments um you know, maybe you want a text to be formatted and look a particular way. So you could suggest that this could this reading look like a web page, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, student answers. I want that to be a handwriting font, which is always a good idea. So I'm just going to leave a little comment. 
please put this into a handwriting font. So you can do it like that, and or you can leave comments in the text. Um, good practice is if there's text that's really just a note to the editor or designer, put it in brackets and color it a different color. Um, that allows for searching for that um, text so we can read it all and then eventually delete it. Um, and it just sets it aside so that we know this is for the designer and the editor. It's not part of the book itself. Um, and, you know, it, it gives you a chance to explain what you want and why you want it. Um, if there's a particular font you like, name it, provide a link. If there's a particular um, page layout you like, link to it. You know, it's always helpful to see what's in your mind and give all the information we need to to take a look. Um, tables. Tables are a real um, difficult thing to work with in the book design software. And I know it's very tempting to use lots of tables because everything gets formatted very nicely, um, but try to keep your tables to a bare minimum. Um, what can you do instead? leave comments again in brackets with a different kind of uh, colored font um, so you can just give very clear directions tell us how many columns the headings of those columns what text goes in the columns if there's any requirements that one particular row or column be thick or thin or wide or shaded anything like that um, it's very difficult to have a book with 36 um, chapters and four sections, and each one of those sections begins with some kind of table, and then you have to undo all those tables and then redo all those tables. This is a much easier thing to work with. Now, um, if you do have a situation like that where you have a style of table that's going to repeat multiple times, you could do one table and format it just to kind of say, this is kind of what I want it to look like. And then refer back to that you know please add a vocabulary table with three columns like on page six and then describe the rest of it um, that can actually be helpful again to see what's on your mind but just one example table is plenty and finally another thing that's very difficult to work with when the text is imported into the design um, software is images um, and images are also an area where um, copyright comes into play and quality comes into play. So um, it's great if you include images that you like, but you have to make sure that the designer can get their hands on the original images to check copyright and to make sure that it's a high quality copy. So if you wanna find your own images, that's great. You don't have to, but it's great. You can certainly uh, find images you like and um, you can place the image in the text to show where you think it should go. You don't have to, but that can be helpful, particularly if you want it to go a particular place, you want it to be um, you know, next to the text or under the text or on the left side or the right side. Um, do leave a comment, tell what you like about the picture or maybe what you don't like about the picture, what you wish could be different. Um, so that we know if we do need to replace that picture, um, we know how to find one that kind of is the kind of thing you were going for, um, or if we want to add or change it in any way. And do leave the source, um, the source to the web page that the picture appears on, not the picture itself, because the web page where the picture appears usually has um, author information. It may have alternative download um, links, and it usually has the copyright information, or it's gonna be a lot easier to find the copyright information, just to make sure that we can use that image and that it's high enough quality. Um, it's okay to just leave a description and not find an actual um, image or reference image. Just again, put it in your comment font um, in brackets. So um, 
and you know give give details again you may not we may not be able to find an image that meets all your requirements so you know put the important stuff in um so we know what kinds of things you're looking for and um and it also makes it easier to discuss if you know we find something else or if the designer disagrees um so i'm sure that that doesn't cover um very much but those are some of the most common issues that i see um thanks for listening and please feel free to email me wlburns at alphabetpublishingbooks.com happy to take any questions or comments you might have and uh thanks for listening